the proper time for witnessing, and then again, when you just aren't supposed to say a word, you just don't say it. I think that's beautiful. The Holy Ghost controls us, so we aren't always talking, but we talk when we should. But now, oh, praise Jesus, the Holy Spirit in me does the talking, and the blessed opportunities I have had with Catholics and so on. Satan is now defeated in our life. Praise it. Praise to the Lord Jesus' glorious name. We have victory in Jesus and are concerned and covered with the blood. It seems I could go on forever. The words just keep tumbling out, and this has become a much longer letter than was intended. Oh, Dr. Toz, the Lord is so good, and, and we so unworthy, and so on. I just want you to know that what God's doing for people. See, what I'm, I'm not up here talk, talking way up here on cloud nine and talking about things that can happen in people's lives, mothers and housewives and students and clerks and truck drivers and, and salesmen and businessmen right here now in Toronto. That's God's epistle to the Torontonians. God Almighty's word to tell us that he will deliver us and we can be a free people. And that uh, he doesn't mean that we should live a discouraged life when we have our human brother joined to God by the mystery of the Incarnation, the right hand of God pleading our cause victoriously and efficaciously, so that you never need to be afraid. You young Christians, don't you worry for a minute in the morning if you get up and feel a little bit blue. Perfectly normal. Every Christian's had gone through that. Don't worry about it. But don't let it become chronic in your life. Rise above it. Open your heart to the fullness of God and see whether he doesn't sweep in to set you free. Now, how about it? That deep inward defeat that can be cured only by an equal inward release. When the Lord releases a man, he's free. And until he's released, you can't sing him free and you can't pound him free and you can't preach him free. And you can't, uh, you can't get him free any way known to mortal man. And yet the church spends millions of dollars every year putting on religious stuff in order to try to get people free. One simple act of the Holy Ghost will free a man. Free him and free him forever and set him loose and turn him loose. And you can get bold about it. You can go to God and get bold about it. I remember well, when I was a young fellow, I got in some kind of an inward jam, it was inward. I got in some kind of an inward jam and the burden was on me and I was bound and I was miserable. And I was walking around bound and I remember one day I was walking along the street over in West Akron. Used to know the name of that street, but it slipped out of my mind for the moment. And I was walking along that street and I'd had enough of it. I'd had enough of that, but I knew God was mad at me. And I knew the devil was bothering me, so suddenly I stopped and stamped my foot in bold daylight and looked up through the trees to God and said, God, I won't stand this anymore. And I didn't. Right there I was a free man. That particular thing left me. God set me free because he knew faith took it, you see. Faith took it. I wasn't mad at the Lord. I was mad at the devil. And it wasn't the Lord that had me bound, it was his old devil that had me, the old devil that had me bound, the old devil. And I got free. I believe that the Lord's people could be a happier people, and then if you become a happy people, souls will get converted. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, then shall sinners be converted unto thee. See? Always follows. A happy church that's happy from the inside out would be something to astonish Toronto. A happy church that didn't cost them a dime to be happy, not a penny. Didn't have to import anything, it was there already. The Lord in his temple, praise the Lord, let everybody rejoice. That would be a sample of a church. I don't know, I still am believing, and it looks as if it was coming. I want Toronto Avenue Road Church to be a sample church. And this is what I'm talking about tonight. Well, how about it now? I think that we ought to pray, and uh, I think we ought to be free. I... I'm glad Wednesday night meetings are turning into meetings of confession as well as declaration of what the Lord is doing. Over in Africa, there's a group of Christians called the Rwanda, that is, that, that's the area where they are, and they make a great deal of confession. They, they just confess to each other and to the Lord. If anything goes wrong, they just find out who's, where the block is and go confess it and get rid of it. 
Two deacons, one deacon gets a little jealous of the other deacon, he goes to the other deacon and tells him, I've been jealous of you, please forgive me, now God, you forgive me. And they've had a revival that's all talked about all over the world because they confessed. Now, I think confession is a beautiful thing, and I think we ought to confess. And I think, sister, you've been trying so hard to get inward freedom, but you've been grouchy to your husband, mistreated him, and uh, he snarled at him. And then you wonder why he doesn't come running to the front and say, I want to be saved too. He can't get over you, you see. But if you'd go to him and tell him about that, break his heart. Just break his heart. You just go tell him about that. Control yourself best you can and say, Honey, I, I'm sorry. I'm a Christian for a long time and I've been trying to get you saved, but I haven't lived the life before you. See what it'll do for that man. Oh, you know, he, he won't break down and cry too. He'll probably cough and act embarrassed and walk away, but... You've got an arrow in his heart he'll not get rid of until the blessed Savior takes it out and puts in the oil and ointment, heals him. Same with you, mister. You may be a deacon in the church or an elder or have a high position. But you've been throwing your weight around. Why don't you tell the little woman about that? Some of you parents. You can't hope to have the Holy Ghost sweep through you in victorious power. You've yelled at those poor kids of yours until they don't pay a bit of attention. You've yelled too much. They don't trust you. Oh, I don't mean to say they think you're a hypocrite, but they just don't seem to think Mama quite has what she never thinks she has. You know, that can be deadly. I'm not... I'm not saying it's true of any particular individual. I have nobody in mind. But I'm just drawing a bow at a venture. Why don't we get rid of all of it? Get rid of it. And you can know what this young lady writes about. And what's perfectly possible for any child of God to know. And sinners will be converted. I know there are unsaved people here tonight. And they're not just wanderers that come in to see a three-headed calf. They are people who came because they're in touch with Christians that are so hot and so joyous and so enthusiastic that they're concerned. I know they're here. And if we Christians get out of their way, they'll be coming one after the other, one after the other. But gossiping and backbiting and grouching and blaming and censoriousness, these things prevent sinners from coming. We just get it out of the way. It'll break the log jam. My dad used to drive logs as a boy. When he was a young fella, I never saw it, but when he was a younger man, and I knew what the log driving was in those times, they'd cut them down, put them, cut them down, and the trees down, make logs out of them, put them in the river. They'd float down the river to the sawmill, down to the dam and then to the sawmill. And taking them down the river, suddenly the whole thing would jam. And some of those wise men knew what to do. They say this, they call that a log jam. Obviously enough, it was. And uh, they would uh, send a man out there. Now, not anybody could do it. But they'd send a man out there. They had great, sharp spikes on their shoes. And they had what they called cant hooks. Some of you wouldn't know what a cant hook was if you met it on the sidewalk. But cant hooks were common around where I live. And they had these cant hooks. And that man would go out carefully, cautiously, but very fast walking over these great growling pile of logs, this great pile of logs, and he'd find the log that had blocked it. He'd catch that thing with his cant hook, spin it a couple times, turn it, shove it, and it would slip away like, like loosing traffic would be a better word for it in our day. Get the, that car that's got the traffic tied up, get it out of there, and then the traffic just melts away. And so he would, he would get that log out of there and get it going, and then he'd hit for shore. By the time he got to shore, the whole thousands of logs would be once more on their way down to the dam. Now, you can have a log jam in a church. One or two logs get crossed. Some fellow gets his nose out of joint for some woman. And there we are, a log jam. The work of God can't go on, but the Holy Ghost is wonderfully able to find what that is. And the preacher doesn't know he's innocent as an unborn babe in arms, but... The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Holy Ghost knows. And so he finds that person. And if he can get the cooperation of that fellow that's got the, the thing, way it goes, and the blessing of God comes. Well, 
I'm going to ask you to do something while we sing. We're going to sing a number here that uh, we used to sing. They used to sing in the early days of the Alliance. The Comforter has come, a familiar and loved hymn, cheering our hearts with the knowledge the Holy Ghost has come. And if there should be those here this night who would say, I feel I'm in the way. Some, some young Christian, some young unsaved person, some sinner wants to be converted unto God. You find your way into the prayer room. Some Christian that feels that you got that inward defeat and you want release, find your way to the prayer room. We seek God together. Lord, no human voice, no talents, no human ability can do what has to be done here. Only thy spirit. And it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. So, Lord, thou didst send the Holy Spirit to the world, the Comforter, to convict, evince the sinners of their sins and show the Christians the beauty of Jesus. So we turn over this to the Blessed Comforter, the Holy Spirit. We make these people accountable to the Holy Spirit, thy vicegerent in the earth. Not to us, they're not responsible to us. They're responsible to the Holy Spirit. So we pray that each one may see this and feel it and know it and respond accordingly. We trust thee for this as we wait on thee just a little longer. Amen. Now, dear friends, we're not pushing this. This is one beautiful thing. Whoever gets converted around here does it because some happy Christian led him to the Lord. Any Christian finds his way to God in a new and wonderful experience, it's because he decides to be that way. No pressure, no unfair advantage, no psychological cruelty. We won't have that here. But if the Spirit's speaking to you without pressure, <clears throat> except the joy pressure within, would you obey him and slip through this door or that one back there and meet us? in the chapel, all right.